All right, back again. So, Fight Night Picks for the fans, episode number one. Worked out some of the kinks, figured out how we can get callers on here. So now I'm really excited to be sharing this with you guys. So, you know my material, you know, uh, Fight Night Picks, uh, whether it's the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, you know, the new YouTube content. I've also got articles on the website, trying to expand the platform. So I've already had a couple shows on Dialogue. Um, and I'm doing a show, it's a baseball show. I know you probably don't want to hear about it with all the MMA content, but uh, so I'm doing Hitting Above the Mendoza Line. It's just a baseball stat show. So this call is brought to you by Dialogue. And if you like discussion and debate, Dialogue lets you have your own call and show over the internet. So I've had success with it in the past and I'm looking forward to bringing more content onto the platform in future. So this week on the podcast, I talked about UFC 227. We did uh, breakdowns with Nolan King. I also did uh, an interview with KSW heavyweight champ Phil DeFreeze, which is pretty exciting. First uh, sitting champ to come on the podcast. And so really excited about bringing, you know, more content to you. Um, YouTube's been a blast so far, and uh, and I, I, I really enjoy this. So I see a couple of you commenting there on Twitter right now. We're trying to have issues, or we've had issues trying to get on. Um, but we've got a new caller on the line. So, caller, I'm going to unmute you here. Who's with me right now? Oh, there we go. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hey, hey, Craig, uh, long-time listener. Uh, just got a question about the uh, DJ Cejudo fight tonight. Yep. Um, we know Cejudo's been uh, practicing more with his striking, and he's got a, a bit of change in his game plan. I'm just curious what you think of that and what his chances are. I'm just trying to respond to a fan here on Twitter. <laughs> Sorry about that. So if you're trying to get on air and if you're listening right now, click on the talk live on air button, the yellow one, and you should be able to come online and then I unmute you from there. That's how it works. I know we're all going to kind of work out the kinks together. So can you repeat your question? Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, in regards to the DJ Cejudo fight tonight, um, Cejudo has been, been practicing more as striking and uh, he's yep. got a bit of a different game plan for uh, going into this fight. And I'm just curious what you think his odds are and how he stacks up, stacks up against DJ. Well, I mean, if you had a chance to look at the odds um, online, I know they're quite skewed. DJ's definitely a heavy favorite in this fight. And, you know, you think, well, Cejudo's progressed so much with his striking since the last time that they fought, which was at UFC 187. But at the same time, DJ has as well. And I don't see anybody right now in the division being able to beat DJ at 125. I think his biggest matchup would either be, it'd be fun to see him fight Dominic Cruz again at 135, or if TJ can somehow come down to flyweight, that would be, you know, a great matchup as well. So appreciate the question. Um, and, and as far as answering it directly, I, I don't think uh, Cejudo has much of a chance. So we've got another caller on the line. Are you on? Can you hear me? Hey, Craig, it's Steve. What's going on, buddy? Steve, just uh, getting excited for UFC 227. What's, what's that, new with you? That's awesome, man. You know, I'm a big fan, bro. <laughs> Thanks. That last call, our kind of stole my thunder there. I was asking about Mighty <laughs> Mouth. Where does he go from here? I mean, they dismissed talks about a super fight, you know, between either Cody or TJ. He's already wiped out the division. So what does this mean for Mighty Mouse if he wins tonight? Oh, did I mute myself there, Stephen? So anyway, what I was saying, I lost Stephen. Um, 
yeah, as far as DJ, uh, as that fight goes, I mean, like I said, some of the, some of the names that he had thrown out there, um, Jose Torres and, uh, and Sergio Pettis. And I think, you know, based on striking alone, I mean, DJ's got them beat in so many different areas. Sergio Pettis would be an interesting matchup. Um, just where striking's it, it's so good. Um, especially in the win over Joseph Benavidez, but, um, as far as a surge or a Jose Torres matchup, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I know he's got a lot of wins on his record, got a TK on his last fight, but if you watched it, I mean, Jared Brooks, um, beat him quite badly in the first round. And if it wasn't for that, that crazy suplex, um, knockout, Jose Torres wouldn't have won that fight. So Jose Torres is a guy that you should look at tonight. He, he really needs a win, has to come out of the gate and get one. And I believe he's the last fight in the fight past prelims. And, uh, and another guy in that same category would be Ricky Simone. I mean, he was a dominant champ in LFA. Um, you know, he was able to rack up the wins there. Comes over into the UFC and has the fight against Marab Duashvili. And whether or not Marab was actually out in that submission that Simone had him in, I mean, Marab would have won that fight, whether it was 30-27 or 29-28. But uh, referees and judges decided otherwise, gave the win to Simone. So Simone's another guy that you got to look for um, to try and – whether it's a finish, it's got to be an impressive fight for him to try and get a bigger name opponent. So I really appreciate the question, Stephen. Um, when I went to click on on air, uh, when I had you on, I possibly muted myself. So I didn't mean to do that. Um, and like I said in the tweets, we're still trying to uh, to work out the kinks here. So I see there's six currently listening. If anybody has any questions for me, definitely hop on air. Um, I really appreciate it. I think the DJ um, Cejudo fights, obviously, it's one of the most interesting fights of the night. Um, I know like we talked, um, with our first guest, uh, you know, Cejudo certainly improved since the, their first fight for sure, but at the same time, DJ has as well. So I, I don't really see any possible way for, for Cejudo to get a win in that. And then as well, I'd like to get some questions or, or some comments and feedback on, on the main event. Um, I put a poll out there on Twitter earlier on this week to see what people were thinking, um, whether or not there should be a rematch in the fight, uh, Garbrandt and Dillashaw, you know, if Garbrandt ends up winning the belt back. And a lot of people seem to think that, yes, that, uh, you know, Dillashaw should get a rematch. I'm, I'm kind of perplexed by the fact that they had this fight. I mean, Cody Garbrandt won the belt from Dominic Cruz in dominant fashion, but I mean, he didn't defend the belt. He, he fought TJ Dillashaw. He lost. It was, uh, I mean, I know he had him rocked. He threw a nice hook at the end of the first round and came out and the good thing about him is he has that killer instinct. So he was able to hop right back on, go after TJ and then he himself got caught. So um, main events, definitely going to be a great fight. Um, and, and it could be a possible fight at night. The other fight that I'm looking at is Cub Swanson and uh, Hanato Moicano. I think that one's going to be a great fight. I mean, whether it was on my podcast or, or other talks or podcasts that I've done, um, you know, Cub Swanson doesn't have a finish since uh, 2013 when he fought Dennis Seaver. And so it's going to be awfully tough for him to get a win over Moicano. I know Moicano likes to back up. Um, he'll go to the fence. He'll counter strike. But at the same time, he's got that finishing ability. So it should be a, a really interesting fight there. So anybody that's listening right now, feel free to call in. All you have to do is click that yellow button there at the top to uh, to talk on air live. And hopefully we don't have too many more kinks. But uh I see Blake sent uh, sent a tweet out there and, and showed it. So just hit talk live on air. Um, it pops up on my screen and then I just, I unmute you and uh, we're good to go. We're good to talk some MMA. So UFC 227 tonight, um, you've got the fight pass prelims. I got a call coming in, so let's answer it. There, you're live on air. Hey, it's Mike. How you doing, Craig? Mike, I'm doing well. Thanks for coming on, man. No problem. Um, I was just wondering, now that uh, DC has kicked Mighty Mouse out of the number one pound-for-pound pound spot in the UFC, and now that he's moved back up to heavyweight, yep. who do you, who you see giving, him, giving DC the most trouble at heavyweight? That's a really good question. I mean, there's a lot of uh, fighters that have made moves in the heavyweight division, whether it's Volkov, um, Curtis Blades. You know, we, we've even seen newer fighters come in and fight top 10 guys, like when Bulgoy Ivanov came in to fight JDS. Um, who would give DC the, the hardest time it would have to be somebody that's really good at striking. Um, I, I wouldn't want to pit him against a wrestler. I think if if Daniel Cormier were to fight Curtis Blades, it'd be an easy win for for Cormier. Um, a rematch with Stipe that that would make a lot of sense. I think you know realistically, Stipe poses the biggest threat. Obviously, he's one of the best heavyweights um, of recent memory. I mean, I don't know who you'd have. Who would you have on top of him on your Mount Rushmore of heavyweights? 
Honestly, I was I was thinking Stipe as well. I mean, um, obviously he didn't give him that hard of a time in their first fight, but he also everybody's got to punch his chance, right? Mm, yeah, I mean Stipe for sure. Um, uh, Volkov. Now going into that Volkov fight, um, the Volkov Verdum fight, I had picked Verdum to win. I, I mean, were you favoring Verdum in that fight as well? Uh, I thought honestly, I thought Volkov was going to take it. I mean, he's longer. He's uh... I think he hits her. To be honest. And, you know, I, I, I should have known better. Uh, just, you know, Volkov, former Bellator champ, former M1 champ. But I wasn't overly impressed with him with his first few starts in the UFC. So that's why I didn't pick him to win. And Verdum had been relatively uh, dominant. And, I mean, you think of the fight he had with Marcin Tabora. And it's not fair if you think of the fight he had against Walt Harris that ended so quickly. But I had Verdum in that fight. Um, but, yeah, there's, there's all sorts of different fighters um, up in that top that top tier that could pose DC a problem, but I think you're right. I think Stipe would be uh, probably the hardest fight for him. So we've got a question. You and I, let's, let's answer it. Keep you on the air. Um, Purple Wolf asks, just curious as to what you think is next for Tony Ferguson, since Dustin Poirier is fighting Nate Diaz and Khabib is fighting Connor. What do you think? Well, I mean, um, I think the best matchup for Tony Ferguson right now would be Khabib, but obviously he's tied up with Connor. Yeah. Um, so maybe after the Connor fight, uh, Khabib would be open to uh, hopefully trying to get a fight with uh, with Tony because obviously that's fallen through a couple times, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think the the fight to make, like you said, I think it's Tony Ferguson Khabib, and and really, I think Tony Ferguson poses probably the toughest test for um, for Khabib. So, oh, I see Stephen call drop, but he's listening. Thanks a lot, Stephen, for the question, by the way. So yeah, I think. Um, toughest test in the lightweight division is Tony Ferguson for Khabib. Um, early prediction on that fight. I know, you know, we've been talking odds. So it's it's roughly um, minus 200 for Khabib right now, plus 160 for Connor. So I think, yeah, Tony Khabib is a fight to make. If Connor loses and if Nate wins over Poirier, I mean, you've got a trilogy fight there. Um, if Poirier beats Diaz, does it set up a fight with Khabib? What do you think? Um yeah, I mean, well, Dustin Poirier, he's uh, he's turning into a killer, honestly. So I yeah. mean, I, I think he he pose a threat to anybody at the, at the top of the uh, top of the lightweight division. Yeah, I mean, there's so many fights to make at lightweight. Even even fighters that aren't in the top 15 are ultra competitive, on, and on uh, on any given day, one of those top 15 could end up fighting for a title. And we saw it at UFC 223. I mean, you had. Uh, Holloway coming in on short notice and he couldn't make it. And then you had Ally Kinto was going to be Paul Felder was going to be Chiesa. So a lot of interesting things in that lightweight division. It's probably, you know, the most talent rich division in MMA, not just in the UFC. Um, and we've got another question here. Haven't paid much attention to the main event. What, if anything, has Cody improved upon or focused on since his last loss to DJ? How do I see this fight going? Um, I'll answer that one quickly. The one thing that kind of makes me a little nervous, if you watch any of the embedded, I haven't seen Cody Garbrandt doing much training. I haven't seen him hitting bags or pads. I know I, I'm sure there's some, you know, behind the scenes things that they don't show us, but um, yeah, I, I don't know what to expect out of Cody Garbrandt. I mean, went back and forth on Twitter with Hunter uh, Al Iconistic there and a uh, flow combat and, you know, he said, well, who's got the quickest hands in, in MMA? Who has quicker hands than Cody Garbrandt? I don't think there's anybody that does. And he hits so friggin' hard for that division. I mean, who else matches how hard Cody Garbrandt hits in the Bantamweight division? Can you think of anybody? I can't think of anybody. I mean, John, or John Lineker is the only one I can think of. So, but, but John Lineker doesn't have that quickness in his hands. So, I mean, for Cody Garbrandt, um, you know, he's got the wrestling background, which is great, but you don't really get to see him use it because his boxing's so good. Um, so as far as a prediction on the fight, I have it going for TJ. I think it's going to be another second-round TKO win. But uh, Red Bear, Mike, I'd like to get your thoughts on that fight as a whole. <clears throat> on, on which fight? Sorry, I was, uh, there was some background noise here. <laughs> on, uh, on the co-main, or sorry, the main event, rather. Sure. Um, with uh, with Cody and uh, yeah, with Cody and TJ, I think uh, honestly, I think TJ throws more volume. Um, yeah. But uh, like you said, I mean, they're both so fast. I think I, I think Cody is a little bit faster. Um, but I mean, TJ caught him in the first fight, so you know he might be a little uh, little shy going into the second one. Who knows? You know, it's a, there's a psychological aspect of it as well. Yeah, I mean. We're, we're really fortunate. I know a lot of people slept on this card and 
there's there's some fights you kind of question or you kind of scratch your head whether it's Pollyanna Vienna fighting JJ Aldrich on the main event or on the main card rather two unranked strawweights or you also have Tiago Santos who's taken on Kevin Holland and I mean Kevin Holland to his credit a lot of good wins I mean how to win at Bellator 195 won his fight on the contender series but like that was a decision win. I was surprised that he got signed anyway. Usually those contender series fights end in finishes. And even if you get a finish, like if you're Chris Curtis, you get a highlight real finish and you don't get signed. So, um, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'll be really interested to see, um, you know, the ratings and the amount of pay-per-view buys after the event, because I, I don't know. I think they're going to be, they're going to be low. Um, but as far as UFC 228, I mean, you've got Till and Woodley coming up. You've also got Shevchenko finally fighting Nico Montano. Um, how do you see that fight going down? I haven't talked about it much. How do you see Woodley and Till going? I mean, Till is so big for that weight. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's hard to make Tom Woodley look small. So, yeah. I mean, uh, and I, I think, uh, I mean, they're both good strikers, but I think Till hits harder. And I think he's, uh, I think he's a better striker. Um, if it goes to the ground, I, I think, uh, Woodley might have an advantage where he's such a strong wrestler, but um, I mean, I, I, I got to give it to Till. I think he's a, I think he's a monster going in there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's funny. You think about Darren Till a year, 18 months ago, going from fighting on the prelims to, uh, to headlining cards, headlining a card at home in Liverpool and uh, pulling away with a win over Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, who again, he's, he's one of those specialists, but he's arguably, you know, one of the best strikers in the UFC. So I think it'll be really interesting. I mean, early prediction, um, I'm going to have to go with Woodley. I mean, I know he's been out with the shoulder surgery, which kind of worries me based on power, but his wrestling's so good. I mean, Darren Till, his background when he was a kid, um, you know, kind of had a rough situation, ended up moving to Brazil, and he has that that background to fall back on, you know, and I'm sure he's got great BJJ that we haven't really been able to see. So it'll be interesting um, how he's going to strike. I mean, I know he could go with counter strike. Um, and, you know, a lot of people complain that Woodley's fight, just his style hasn't been, uh, you know, it hasn't been, I don't know, fun to watch, I guess. But uh, yeah, it'll be really interesting. UFC 228, UFC 229 totally stacked. And then UFC 230 in New York. And that one stacked as well with a lot of middleweights. So just want to remind you, this call is brought to you by Dialogue. If you like discussion and debate, make sure you call in. Um, Dialogue lets you have your own call and show over the internet. And uh, I really appreciate everybody coming on, everybody listening um, that's joined me here, all the callers that we've had. And I'll be back again next week, um, and we'll just continue this. I really want to have a, a discussion on Dialogue with, with the fans. So appreciate um, everybody listening. I'll be on Twitter. Make sure you tweet at me. Um, apologies for the few technical difficulties here, but you know, we'll get it rolling and we'll get it going. So thanks for, uh, for joining me.